Hi, so my name is Alex. Uh, I'm doing my book talk over Robin McKinley's Rose Daughter. And I actually was given this book by my mom. Given This, this book was given to me, sorry, by my mom uh, when I was in middle school because I, uh, I love fairy tales and she's always known this. And she's like, well, you know, I saw this. It's supposed to be a, like a different take on Beauty and the Beast. And she goes, and I heard really good things about it. So I thought maybe you'd like it. So she got it for me. And uh, I actually lost my original copy of it, so I had to buy a whole new one because I really do like it. And I've read it oh, maybe five or six times. Um, but it's... In the story, Beauty has two sisters. Her oldest sister is named Lionheart, and her middle sister is named Jewel Tongue, and Beauty is the youngest. And uh, at the start of the book, they live in this really big, nice house with their father and their mother. And something happens, and um, they kind of fall into to poverty, and they have to leave their big house, and they get uh, notice that they have a house that they didn't know about out in the middle of this little town called Longview. And they have a little cottage outside of the town, and they decide to go live there because they have nowhere else to go. So they go there, and Jewel Tongue and Lionheart and Beauty, you know, have to kind of figure out how to make their way in this new situation, how to you know, earn money, how to make a living, how to fix up this house. They all learn different skills that help them uh, get get to a point where they can actually make a good living in their new town. And their father, um, after the after their house fell into poverty and they had to leave, you know, he kind of went into a depression, he didn't really say anything. And um, he actually starts writing. Well, they start getting to the point where they're very well off and uh, he, one day the father gets noticed that he has to go back to their old town um, because one of his ships he used to be a merchant. One of his ships came in, they have a bunch of property on there. And if he gets there quick enough, he can actually make a bit of a profit off of it. And so he asks each of his daughters what they would like, um, from their, from his trip back to the town. And, you know, one of them is like, oh, well, I would love this book. You know, I would love this. They each say something and beauty. It's just like, I would like a rose. That's it. Because even though the house is named Rose Cottage, she can't get any of the roses to bloom in the cottage. Not yet. And so he goes and story goes, and this is kind of throwback to the original Beauty and the Beast um, fairy tale, not the Disney version. Uh, he ends up at the Beast's castle, and he takes a rose from the garden outside of the Beast's house, and the Beast gets mad and says, like, you know, I offered you food, shelter, I was going to let you live, and then you go and try and steal from my rose garden. He goes, look, I just, I'm sorry, it's just my youngest daughter loves roses, and I would, uh, I wanted to bring her something, and this is the only one I could find, and so the beast is like, alright, in a month's time, when the last petal on this rose falls, I want you to send your daughter to me. So the father goes home, and he has to tell Beauty that she has to go stay with this beast, and they try to make the most out of their last month together, and, uh, I'm not going to say anything else from there because then it kind of gets into where the difference, where it differs even more from the original fairy tale Beauty and the Beast because usually it's just, oh, you know, they fall in love and everything's great. Um, this one, there's a couple trials of some weird things that happen. Um, and it kind of gives you more of an insight into whether or not he's really a beast or if it's just, you know, you shouldn't judge someone by how they look. And it's a very interesting take on it. And I, um, I would love it if other people read it. I think it's fantastic. And she actually has another Beauty and the Beast redone or remake that she has. And if I remember correctly, it's called, oh gosh, I think it is just called Beauty. If I remember yeah, it's it's called Beauty, um, and it's also a different version of it, and I like that one as well. Uh, I would have done a review on it as also, but I unfortunately no longer have the book. Um, I lost it, and I'm very sad. But if you are a huge fairy tale fan, if you're a fantasy fan, if you just want a kind of an old school classic kind of romance, you know, this is one I would definitely suggest. Um, it's only like 287 pages, so it's not a very long read, and. Um, I hope whoever does decide to pick it up and give it a read, they really enjoy it. I mean, I, I really did. But thank you very much.